go to the window menu and down to swatches. You can see the swatches there and it will display the swatches panel. Now, what are the swatches? Well, you've got colors, you've got gradients, you've got patterns, as well as these groupings of colors. And you can just go and select a path here and then you just simply go over here and you can apply it. Just click there and you can see the color changes. So it's a great way of accessing a whole range of different colors as well as patterns, gradients, and much, much more. However, how to add some more? Well, there's a couple of ways of doing it. And I'm just gonna go through them. Now you've got here swatches panel, you can say right side menu of swatches panel. You've got new swatch all the way down here. You've also got down the bottom here, open swatch library. And you can go to art history, Baroque impression, there's loads of them. Loads and loads of these, so gradients. Maybe go for this one, gradients and season. Simply click there and it will be added just down here. If you've got some other ones, if you've already got a couple of these libraries open, it will be added to that set. You can always just drag it out and just position it there if you want. Also, once you've done that, you can select them. So you just select path, click there, and you can see that's then added there and they'll be added over here. However, if you go over here to the sort of the colors here, so I'm just gonna select a color, they're not added. I'm not certain why. I always thought they were, but however, they're not. They seem to not be added. So you can click there and they're not added. However, you can force it by just going here to add swatches. So on this library, and it's you can't edit the library, you can't change it, it's an ASE file. Add to swatches. So you can just say add to swatches and then it will be added over here. You can always reposition it. So you decide, you know what, I want it somewhere else. You can just position it elsewhere. So again, if you want, you think, oh, you know what, I want that one. Even though it's added here, it's not added here. So you can simply just select and drag. And you can do the same with, say, a group. So you can select the group like that, all those groups in there. You select them all if you want and simply just drag. And you can see now they've been added to the swatches. And you can do that for the other one. So bright there, you can turn around and say, oh, I want that yellow. Again, it's added there. However, you can simply drag and put it in there as well. And that's the document. So when you save this document, the swatches panel will be saved. So you can go there and you've got lots of other options here. Open swatch library. So you can go maybe for patterns. There's quite a few. Not as many as gradients. Gradients, there are lots and lots and lots of gradients, which is really useful. You've also got web. You've also got an option here of <clears throat> other library. Other library. So right at the bottom, other library, which is very useful as well. So you may have other files that you've got in a completely different location from the standard location that swatches are held in. So where are these files held? Well, I'm just going to quickly show you. This is on my Mac, of course. So on my Mac, you go to... Adobe Illustrator 2022 or 21, 20, CO6, etc. Or in the case of a PC, you'll be on program files and then you have, I think it's Adobe, and then within Adobe, you'll have Adobe Illustrator, etc. etc. Go to that main area, Illustrator, and then you can see within that you've got presets and you can expand that out and you'll see what happens. You get EN underscore GB. They obviously broken it down by language. So obviously Great Britain, but yours might be EN underscore US, etc. So once you've got that, you can then break that down even further and you can go to swatches and you can see all the swatches. Now, as before, you've got art history, all those sort of things. You can see them here and they're all ASE files, all ASE files that you can load. So again, ancient, Baroque, impression. So they're located there. If you want to add, your own swatches files. If you create some swatches files and you want to put them, just put them into this location. But you'll be able to save them as AI files. That's the key thing. When you go to Illustrator, you can do file save as, save them as AI and put them here. And then they will be located and found that way as well. So you've got that. Now let's just go back here. So you've got this one. You can do it all right here. So you can go down here. You've got all of them there. You've got this menu here, you've got them here. So again, you can access them here. You can also go down here and let's just drag that up a bit. You've got an option here, going down this bit and you've got the same thing, exactly the same list. 
Now, it's not on this. Actually, I'm surprised that it's not added there as well. That would be really nice. However, just put them there. You can also access them via the window menu. So window menu, just right down the bottom. You've got swatch libraries down the bottom here. So the window all the way down the bottom and you can find that swatch libraries. And again, artistry, ancient, etc. So you can access them that way as well. However, personally, another thing that I find really useful is you can access them via this. You go down here to the bottom here. So you can just go here and you go, now say I'm on bright there. Um, now I could again drag that out, doesn't matter. Now with bright, I can then say, uh, drag, let's go this way. Now you can see what happens. You click here, it becomes cool. If I click here, it goes back to bright. It's running through the list of all. So if I just go break this down, art history, ancient Baroque, etc., etc., celebrations, you can see all these, it runs through this menu. That's what it's doing, it runs through the menu. So gradients, it will go through all those. So again, you can click there, and you can see dark, desaturated. So it's not in alphabetical order, but it's alphabetical order within the categories. So corporate, then it will go to basic RGB, devices, print, web, then earth tone, beverage, fruit, ice cream, sweets, vegetables, brights, color combination, and now it goes through all the gradients. And you can see as you go through them, you can see all of them. And at any point you can think, oh, I want that one. So click and you can add it. Again, go to another one. Oh, I like that one. Click and add it. And again, the gradients will be added there. So you can just run through and the, oh, that one, spectrum. You can click there and it's added again into the document. And you can see as you go through, you can just keep adding them and they'll be added into the document library. So it's a great way of running through them very quickly, I think. It's also maybe not something you do all the time, but it's something useful just to see what you've got in terms of access. Because if you just go, like if you go here and you just go through all these, it's color combinations. I don't think it really means much. You say, oh, color combinations, what's that? Well, until you actually run through them all and just say, oh, you know, I didn't, you know, until today, I've never ever selected basic graphic dots. So I think that's a great selection of things. So you can click there and you've got a nice selection of dot designs, which are quite easy to access, use. And you've also got some other ones as well. I think that's quite a nice little selection. And again, you've got some more graphic lines, graphic textures, decorative leg, and so on. You can see that you've got quite animal skins. It's amazing. You can have these things, never realize that you've got them, don't use them. And, and then you've got another, and these are useful as well. These color groups are great because you've got the colors, as it says, tetrad. So it's a nice, harmonic, lovely gradient of, sort of colors. Triads. So they're also useful, skin tones and so on. So you can run through it, complementary. So you've got the, com you don't have to think, you know, what, what the complementary of red, well, green. You can actually just drag that group over and you've got it there hopefully, into the swatches. Simply select there and drag, and there it is. Just drag it over, as long as you get the plus. If you don't get the plus, it hasn't added it. Sometimes I do that, I drag over, I think, oh, you know what, I just drag it over, and then it doesn't appear. If the plus doesn't appear, you haven't done it, you've just dragged it somewhere else on the artboard, etc. So that's those ones, complimentary. I think that's just a great way. Again, you've got access, however, Say you want to use them later, these libraries, and you don't want to have to keep going to it, go over here and say, you know, open it each time. There is an option here, right side, persistent. You can turn around and say, I want that to be stored, displayed, persistent. So now, when you come into Illustrator again, go to Illustrator, you will see this library pop up. Personally, I think that might just clutter up your artboard and screen with lots and lots of panels. But if you're using them a lot, then of course it's gonna be useful to actually have them accessible. You've opened, you've loaded swatches, but how to save them? Say you've got some great swatches in this panel. Well, you can save it. You can go to file and save. But unfortunately, of course, you get all the other stuff that you've got in the document saved along with it. But say you wanna save a file and save it. So maybe clients have got it or maybe various, whatever. As all over your associates as well. Someone else may want that file. Well, you can save them. You can go to the swatches panel. Swatches panel again comes to the rescue. 
just down here, just down the bottom, you've got the option where all of these, you've got an option here, save swatches. So save swatches. Now, it doesn't actually say save the document swatches, but it saves swatches, and it saves all this current set in here. But you can also, if you want to, do it here. Just go in here, there's save swatch library as ASE, and save swatch library as AI. Now, AI was the older format for these swatches libraries. Now, you can also save the swatch library as ASE. That's a format that seems to be now used for the swatches. I'm not certain why ASE, maybe ASE can be used in other applications, part of the Creative Cloud or something. I'm not certain about why there is an ASE as well as an AI. But say you go there and you can say all these ones. Now, if you don't want the swatches to be saved, the only way you can do it, as far as I can see, there's no sort of like hide feature. You can just delete them. So you can say, you know what, I, I don't want to save that one or that one. And I can just delete them. So you can just select there, delete swatches, and then they won't be saved. Which maybe is not ideal, but that's what you can do. So you just go here again, save swatch library as ASE. And it will come up here. Now you'll notice I've got one already. I've saved as AI format. And again, you might want it per day. So you work on particular projects during the day. You know what, I want to say, I think that's a great selection. You can give it a date or something like that. Or maybe you're working, let's say working on a project, you're working on comic books or something, a particular comic book. Here's the swatches that are saved for that particular project. So let's just give it a name. And obviously I've gone from Monday 28th there, but you can go for anything else. Maybe comic book project one. Maybe spell it even right, one. So you can just save it and save there. Swatches containing grains are not currently exchangeable. So that is the reason, <laughs> which is quite slightly frustrating, but still you can save it. So if that happens, if you've got things like gradients in there, clearly your best bet is going to be go down here and save swatch library as AI. Now, weirdly, the one down the bottom, save swatches here, does save it as AI. And that does save everything. So you can just say, go there again, save swatch library as AI. If you want the gradients and you want the patterns, etc. And again, maybe comic book there, and I'm just obviously going to, it's going to be saved as AI format. Click save. So you've got everything saved. Well, as before, what you can do, you can go here to the right side menu or 50 other places. You can go down here, open swatch library, and then you can go down to the, just there, open swatch library, user defined, and you can see you've got your things down there. So comic project one or Monday 28th, select one of them. And then you will see what happens. It opens it as a library. And again, it's exactly the same, not editable. You can't edit it. It's just a library. It's a solid library that you can't change. But it does mean that you can, if you want to, you can make it persistent. Maybe during the day, you know, you're working, say, in the start of the morning, Monday 20, you create a little library. This is what the colors I'm going to be using during the day. I'm not certain you would do that, but that's a possible. You've got your set of blues or greens that you're going to work with. That's going to be your palette. I guess that's possible. You'd say persistent. And so it means that this now will appear cross fingers each and every time when you open up Illustrator. I have noticed it doesn't always work. I've gone into Illustrator thinking that these panels will be displayed again. They're not. But most times it does seem to appear. Maybe someone could put a comment saying it does or doesn't do that. But that seems to be the case. Most times it should appear. So persistent means that your library will be accessible next time. And you've got all exactly the same designs you've got here. Of course, this matches this because I haven't changed anything. But if I had, now you can still click there and you can just add all the various, just add them again and again and again. Of course, if it's already in there, you can see it's just added, it doesn't add it again. Even if you try and add it again, just drag up. Ooh, it does actually, it's weird, isn't it? <laughs> you can click on it, doesn't add it, but you can drag it and force it in. That's weird, I've never noticed that. That's a weird behavior, because I think that it should, once you've got it in there, it should look and check, then doesn't have to add it again. What's the point? Just adds, because basically, I mean, it's, it's 
these are fairly small files. We're not talking huge files, but you can see that you could potentially have some pattern designs that are quite large. You know, you could have you could have images, etc., and then you could duplicate them, and you would actually have quite a large file. However, you got this, so that's the easiest way of quickly going here, down here, save swatch as ASE if you want to save it to the newer format. Again, I'm not. It's obviously an exchange format, but clearly of not much use if it doesn't allow for gradients and patterns to be stored. That's uh, not very helpful. However, probably the more universal format, if you want to use that, is save library as AI, if you're just going to use it with, say, Illustrator, because then you can at least save the gradients and your pattern designs as well. And then you can access them here. There's no option for there. And again, exactly the same as before, you could use this as well. So you can just go down here, you've got user defined. So if you go to web, so you've got the web there, you can click on there and then you can see you can run through exactly the same way as before. All the user defined ones are right at the end, right at the bottom. I'm not so why they don't put them at the top, since that would be the most useful place at the top. Your user defined are your key files, except they put them weirdly at the bottom. Makes no sense to me. I would have them at the top of the selection. But, however, that's the way that would make more sense to me. So you've got all your colours there. And that, well, I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Thank you much.